So here we go with the standard normal curve, also known as the bell curve. Any ideas why it's called the bell curve? Because it looks like a bell. Genius, right? Yeah. Um, okay, it is used to model data. One thing that's great is 50%, 50% of the data is above the mean, and 50% of the data is below the mean. Does that always happen that 50% of the data is above the mean? No, but in a bell curve it does. Okay, now I'm going to give you the three most important numbers of this module. You ready? 68. 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, just focus on the 68 right now. <coughs> ready for the next important number? 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. And the last important number, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So what are those three numbers again? Well said. 68, 95, 99.7. You memorize those three numbers, you're off to a really good start this chapter. Okay? In fact, those numbers are so important that sometimes they are referred to as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. No joke. Mathematicians aren't very creative with names. Um, so, in a normal curve. Now, a normal curve, I want you to picture it without all these lines underneath it. Okay? Do you see the bell shape? When you get a normal curve, you're going to start off with that bell shape. And what you're going to do is at the very top, you're going to draw this line right down the middle. And you're going to label that line as the mean. Whether that is mu or x bar, depending on population <clears throat> or sample. But that is your mean. Okay? Then, if you took your standard de deviation, let's say your mean is... Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and use this example down here. The mean is 64 inches. So I'm going to call this one. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Where can I label it? 64. It's going to give you a standard deviation in these problems also. What's the standard deviation? 2.5 inches. So I have labeled this 64. Now, this will the label will change here depending on what your data says. The, if the mean is something else, you're going to put something else right there. But I have now, as soon as I've labeled that with a number, I have turned this line right here into a number line. Okay? So what I need to do to get my next lines out here is to go to the right, I need to add one standard deviation. If my standard deviation is 2.5, what is 64 plus 2.5? 66.5. What would be one standard deviation to the left? How would I find that? I would subtract 2.5 from my mean. So what's 64 minus 2.5? 61.5. Does that make sense? Okay. How do I get the next line out? Well, I would take 66.5 if I'm looking for this one on the right. I add another standard deviation. What's 66.5 plus another 2.5? 69. And on the other side, what happens if I subtract another 2.5? 61, 60, 50, 59. Can you come up with the third one out on both sides? Fifty six point five down here. That's fifty nine minus another two point five. And up here is seventy one point five. That's sixty nine plus another two point five. So what did I just do? Whew. I took my mean 
and I took my standard deviation. My standard deviation is 2.5, so watch what I do here. Add 2.5, add another 2.5, add another 2.5, till you have three sections up here. Then to, for the other side, you subtract 2.5, subtract another 2.5, subtract another 2.5, okay? Now again, these numbers are particular to this example down here. The numbers will change. If I said this, the mean was 100, you're gonna have 100 right there, and I would tell you the standard deviation is 10, in which case you would add 10 three times to the right, and subtract it three times to the left, and that's how you would get those numbers down there. Does that kind of make sense? So that's gonna change from problem to problem. Now let me tell you what is not going to change from problem to problem, is these numbers right here. When I said 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, what that means is that means that 68% of the data falls between one standard deviation below which is right here, and one standard deviation above. So from here to here, this section, if you want to think about it as almost like area, that represents 68% of the data. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if 68% is made up of these two chunks here, what does each of those chunks represent? 34%. You're going to need to know how to do this, by the way. Does that make sense? Good answer. What's my next number? 95. 95% of the data is what falls between two below and two above. So let's think about this for a minute. This was 64. Broken up means that these two are 34% each, right? If these two, if everything between here, so if I were to cover that up and cover this up, everything that you can see, how many sections are there? Four sections. That makes up 95% of my data. Can we figure out how much those two sections are worth? How? Well, let's see. I took... If it's all 95%, and I already know that this is 34 and this is 34, right? That leaves me 27% to be split between those two sections. Yeah? So if I divide it by 2, that's 13.5%. Do you understand how I did that? See if you can do the next section. If between three standard deviations represents 99.7, see if you can find out what these two sections right here would represent. So-so? We're getting there? You ready to talk about this one? Okay. So how do I find this? Well, if this whole thing is 99.7%, what am I going to subtract? What I already know, right? And I know that this is 68, and I know that all of these together is 95, right? Or I could subtract them individually. So I have 4.7% that needs to be split up to those two sections. So if I divide that by 2, what do I get? 2.35% for each of those. Does that make sense how I got that 2.35%? Now, does all this together add to 100%? What does this all together add to right now? 99.7, which means that this teensy little bit that's outside of three standard deviations 
also has a value. What do those two sections together equal? 0.3%, the remaining 0.3% between 99.7 and 100. So if I take 0.3 and I divide it by 2, I get 0 0.15 right there and 0 0.15. Do you understand how I got those numbers? Okay, because when it comes down to it, um, some of you will memorize these percentages in here. Some of you will just measure, memorize this. And if you memorize this, you can come up with this if you understand how it's done. That makes sense? So again, every time you start one of these problems, you're gonna draw yourself a bell curve just like that, which you can't see. You're gonna draw yourself a bell curve just like that. You're gonna put your mean right in the middle and you're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three for every single problem. Does that make sense? This data had me at 64 in the middle and then we labeled 66.5, 69 and 71.5 and then this way we had 61.5, 59, and 56.5. Now, once you've got that, the hardest part is done. We're almost, you almost read this the same way you read the histogram that was on yesterday's test. You almost read it the same way. So what the normal curve is, is it tells us a probability, okay? So when we have probability, we use this P thing. So this part right here, part A, says find the probability that a woman is shorter than 64 inches. So if I go to my normal curve, I'm going to use the one up here because it's all labeled for me, 64 inches is right here, correct? The probability that a woman is less than 64, well, what direction would less than 64 be, left or right? Left. left. So if this is my 64 boundary, I'm just going to add up all the percentages to the left of there. 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15. I can either add those all up individually or I could recognize that that's half the graph, so it's what? 50%. So what's the probability that a woman is shorter than 64 inches? 50%. The questions are very simple and very quick to answer once you have your bell curve set up. What is the probability that a woman is taller than 69 inches? So here's 69 inches. Which direction would taller than be? To the left or to the right? right. To the right. So taller than would be 2.35 plus 0.15. What does that give me? 2.5%. Easy? Really easy. What's the probability that a woman is shorter than 56.5 inches? 56.5 shorter than would be to the left. The only thing to the left is 0.15%. And then finally, the probability that a woman is between 61.5 and 69. Well, here's 61.5. Here's 69, so what do I need to add together? 34, 34, and 13.5, correct? What does that give me? 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, 81.5%. Does that make sense? Should be super, super easy, yeah? Okay, let me check something. So tomorrow we're going to focus on all this Z-score stuff. That's what all of tomorrow's notes are on, okay? Pretty easy? All right, happy studying.